Kato, it's a street that crosses the city east to west. And when they meet the main junction, the main hub of the city, you will have temples and you will have uh, communal buildings. And this is what we see over here. This is the center. This is the area where the Kado and the Dokomano are meeting. And you, we're going to see there's the theater, there is a bathhouse, there are some temples. So this is the hub of the city. This is only less than 10% of the city size. Like Caesarea, most of the city around us, still underground. But this is the central location, okay? However, I'm not here, and we are not here to talk about the beautiful city of Bechan from Roman time, because Bechan is actually a biblical time. The hill over there, for the same reason, was a place where many, many different people lived and want to rule from. And I want to talk about the story, the biblical story, that Bet Yan is mentioned in. Okay? So we cannot see it now, because the trees hide it. We'll see it from the bus. Past those trees, there is a ridge. Ridge of mountain that's called Mount Gilboa. And Mount Gilboa is a famous mountain. Let's read from Kings 31. The last battle of Saul and his son against the Philistines. Now Saul believed that he had a brilliant strategy. What was the Philistine strength? There, there were not more people, okay? Maybe they were larger, but their numbers were not that big. The Bible tells us that the strength was the chariots. So the master of chariots and the Israelis, the Israelites were afraid of them. So Saul's strategy was to engage them in the open, in the flatland, in the valley, but then to retreat to the mountain, over there they will have to abandon the chariots to chase the Israelites up the mountain. And Saul Plan said, now I will turn around and now we'll have the higher ground. The Philistines were not stupid. They made a treaty with a tribe of nomads from the desert that were excellent archers. So every time the Israelites turned their back to flee, they would shoot arrows at their backs. And when they stand to fight, the Philistines run them over. And the battle was over before it even began. And meanwhile, the Philistines were battling against Israel. And the men of Israel fled before the Philistines, and they fell slain on Mount Gilboa. And Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and run me through with it. Lest this uncircumcised come and run me through and abuse me. Remember I mentioned the... Uh, King Saul Street when we've been in the hostage as well. But the armor bearer did not want to do it because it was very frightening. And Saul took the sword and fell upon it. And later on we can read, and it happened the next day that the Philistine came to strip the slain and they found Saul and his three uh, sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. And they cut off his head and stripped his arm on Armor, and they sent throughout the Philistine country to bring the tidings to the temples of their idols unto the people. And they put his armor in the temple of Ashtoreth, and his body they impaled on the wall of Bet Shan. And the inhabitants of Jabesh, Gilad, remember the Gilead, heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, and every valiant fellow arose and they went all night long and they took Saul corpse and the corpses of his son from the wall of Bethshan and they came back to Jabesh in Gilead and buried them there and they took their bones and buried them under uh, Tamaris in Jabesh and they fasted for seven days. So we read what the Philistine has done from the wall of Bethshan. The Philistine were the strongest people so they control Bethshan in the open, the trading routes. Um, and we read how the people of Jabesh were sneaking overnight in this landscape, as I was describing, taking the bodies, removing the limbs, and uh, carry it with them over there, and they buried it in unknown location. Okay? And then they fasted for seven days. This is the source of the Jewish Shiva. Okay? The Jews still today, when someone close to us is passed away, we mourn for seven days. Um, and we need to ask ourselves, why would they bury the, 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 the body of the first king of Israel, this great hero? Why would they bury him in an unknown location? 
Why not to build a mausoleum or to build a nice place for him? So we don't know for sure. Uh, maybe they were afraid of the Philistine response. And maybe they were afraid of someone else's response. No one knew how David is going to react. Now we know that David is going to be the next king. He was very strong opposition to Saul. And he's going to be the next king. So how will he react? Normally, we can see it even today in politics, when we elect a new prime minister or president, the first thing that they're doing, uh, oh, I couldn't people. imagine, I couldn't imagine how terrible things were until I got into the uh, uh, place of power. The people before me, they had no idea what they're doing. I had so much to correct. Everything that has done before me was terrible, right? This is the first response. Politicians. Uh, and we know that in the past, the king tried to erase any memory of the previous kings. They wanted their name to be glorified. And people were afraid that this is how David is going to react. So let's read about David's reaction. And David sang this lament for Saul and for Jonathan. The splendor of Israel, your height lies slain. How have the warrior fallen? Tell it not in Gath. Proclaim not in Ashkelon Street, lest the Philistine's daughter rejoice, lest the daughter of the uncircumcised gloat. Ho, hills of Gilboa, no dough and no rain upon you, O lofty fields. For there the warrior shield was besmirched, the shield of Saul and burnished with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the warrior's fat, Jonathan Baal did not retreat, and the sword of Saul never turned away empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and dear, in their life and in their death, they were not parted. They were swifter than eagles and stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet and bangles, who stud your garments with jewelry of gold. How have the warriors fallen? in the midst of battle jonathan upon your height slain i grieve for you my brother jonathan where the very dear you were to me more wondrous your love to me than the love of women how have the warrior fallen and the gear of battle is lost what a beautiful way to put it he's not trying to uh, tell people oh they were terrible he said they were great they were great. This is an amazing reaction. Not only the choice of one, his amazing reaction is to see and to remember how great the people before him. And in a way, he said, I will carry on. I will continue what they started. I will continue to unite the people to be one. Um, and this is written in Hebrew 3,000 years ago. Yet, it's so good and so strong and so accurate and so precise that we couldn't find better word in the last 3,000 years. And over there, there is a garden. We're going to sit from the bus. And in the middle of this garden, there is a memorial for the fallen soldiers from Beth Shan. They died 3,000 years in the Battle of Israel, after 3,000 years after the Battle of Saul uh, and his sons against the Philistines. And like many other memorials in Israel, every town, every city has one. We always put uh, some biblical verses on the memorial. And they're always from King David, uh, lamentation over Saul and his son. We believe that, as I told you, a nation that no not is past, has no future, and its present is foggy. Uh, we, we cannot come up with better words, and we need to remember where we're coming from. And we need to remember that each and every one that fall for our country is as brave as Saul and his son, and we can see it everywhere. And when you stop the average Israeli in the street and you ask him, can you read me from the Bible? What do you remember? They all remember this part of the Bible. Because every year we have the memorial for the fallen soldiers, and this is what we read. Uh, David lamentation. The last thing that I will tell you, that his lamentation is, is pretty tricky. And, and problematic and why is that because um, I don't know if you notice but David is, is cursing the mountains of Gilboa what he said Lotal who is Tali I know Tali, Tali in Hebrew means uh, do 
and he, he's telling them, no dawn, you mountain Gilboa, no rain. And if you curse the, the land with no rain, no water, how can be life on the, on the land? Uh, and it's a good, good question that I couldn't find an answer. I can tell you that it does rain over there uh, and quite a lot. However, the soil over there is not good for agriculture. All the water go immediately under the mountain and they pop up in springs in the valley. And many of the springs pop up over here in Batshan. Uh, so in a way, the, the curse came true. Okay, so this is David lamentation. Uh, and we can imagine over there around the hill, on top of the hill was the Philistine city, and around the hill there was the walls of the city. And uh, we can imagine that the people of Jabesh will sneak up to the, uh, to the walls, remove the bodies and the limbs, and then disappear. Um, the city under the hill was built a thousand years after the biblical event. Okay? Um, and it was a very, very important city, as I told you, very strong, very rich, that lasted here for a very long time. And it was abandoned in the same time, pretty much as Capernaum. The same earthquake struck the city really hard and the city never fully recovered. Uh, what I want to do now, uh, to have a little bit of uh, a time in the city,